Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless it seems as though god is putting his focus back on the land of israel in these last days in the last days the prophet zechariah tells us israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against jerusalem zechariah 12 2 and 3 behold i will make jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Israel condemned and the Palestinians welcomed on Saturday a United Nations vote over Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories. Draft resolution one is adopted. The General Assembly passed a resolution on Friday to ask the International Court of Justice for an opinion on the legal consequences of the, quote, occupation, settlement, and annexation, including measures aimed at altering the demographic composition, character, and status of the holy city of Jerusalem. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Saturday called the vote despicable. He said the Israeli people are not occupiers and would not be bound by the resolution. The vote presents a challenge for Netanyahu, who took office this week as the head of a new hard-right government that has made settlement expansion and annexation a priority. Palestinian officials hailed the vote as a victory Saturday. A spokesman for Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said the time has come for Israel to be a state subject to law. Along with Gaza and East Jerusalem, the Palestinians seek the occupied West Bank for a state. Most countries consider Israel's settlements there illegal, a view Israel disputes, citing historical and biblical ties to the land. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2, and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. We trust that regardless of your vote today, if you believe in international law and peace, you will uphold the opinion of the International Court of Justice when delivered, and you will stand up to this Israeli government right now because freedom, justice, and peace shall prevail, and peace shall prevail, and peace shall prevail. First Thessalonians 5.3 While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Is the sudden destruction coming, and with it the rapture of the church, the revealing of the Antichrist, and war? All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten Him. Where will we be? in the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself hereafter it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist, which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
It's time to get to know him, and the sooner, the better. Israeli Ambassador Gilad Erdan, who just had his term extended by Prime Minister Netanyahu, rejected the motion as completely one-sided. The outrageous resolution calling for the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice is a moral stain on the UN and every country that supports it. No international body can decide that the Jewish people are occupiers in their own homeland. Any decision from a judicial body which receives its mandate from the morally bankrupt and politicized UN is completely illegitimate. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Whenever I hear that Damascus has been bombed, it reminds me of a prophecy that is yet to be fulfilled, spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, and seems to be on the verge of coming to pass. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9. In that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. Is there any evidence of Isaiah 17 1 happening anytime soon? The Syrian army has accused Israel of firing missiles, killing two soldiers, and putting Damascus airport out of service. The attack comes shortly after Israel's incoming government take over the reins. Our correspondent Jody Cohen sent us this report. Take a look. The strike near Syria's capital airport is the second such attack in six months. There has been no comment from the Israel Defense Forces, but in the past, Israel has suggested that it targets weapons convoys headed from Iran to its proxies across West Asia. The strike in Damascus comes one day after Iran carried out a drill in which it launched an explosive-laden drone at a simulated Israeli Navy base. At the Israeli government's swearing-in ceremony on Thursday, new Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu identified Iran as his number one priority. The first task is to frustrate Iran's ability to develop a nuclear arsenal that will threaten us and the entire world. Meanwhile, on Sunday, Egyptian President el-Sisi called Netanyahu to congratulate him on becoming PM and urged him to refrain from any measures that could inflame regional tensions, largely understood to relate to the Palestinians. Psalm 2, 1 through 12. Why did the nations rage? and the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces, and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree, the Lord has said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There was dancing, fireworks, 
and a ballistic missile launch. North Korea brought in the new year not just with festivities, but also by firing what it called its super large multiple rocket launcher. Officials showed off the systems on Saturday, capping a six day meeting of the ruling Workers' Party in which they laid out their goals for 2023. Kim Jong un said 30 such systems were ready to be deployed to, quote, overwhelm the enemy, South Korea. Pyongyang also warned it would significantly increase the production of tactical nuclear weapons. The current situation highlights the necessity to mass produce tactical nuclear weapons and calls for an exponential increase of the country's nuclear arsenal. North Korea declared itself a nuclear state in September, calling its program irreversible and not up for negotiation. In announcements made on Sunday, a new intercontinental ballistic missile system would also be built with a quick nuclear counter-strike mission. Likely to run on solid fuel, it was already on Kim Jong-un's wish list of military modernizations outlined in its five-year plan, along with a nuclear-powered submarine. In response, South Korean President Yoon Song yeol said Seoul stood ready to punish any provocation by the North. His defense ministry warned any attempt to use nuclear weapons would spell the end of Kim Jong-un's government. Russia ringing in the new year with another round of attacks on Ukraine, 45 drones on New Year's Day. After dozens of missiles the day before. Amazingly, only one person was injured here. Ukrainian authorities are saying this is Vladimir Putin's New Year's greeting. One of the drones even scrawled with Happy New Year, according to Kyiv police. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky delivered dueling speeches. Putin blaming the war on the West and vowing victory, while Zelensky rallied his people with a message of hope. Drones, missiles and shells landed across Ukraine overnight. Ukrainian authorities said 40 drones that were headed for Kyiv were intercepted though some energy facilities were damaged, causing outages. Since October, Russian strikes on power and water supplies have been almost weekly, as their ground forces struggle to advance. But this third night of barrages in a row is unprecedented. Ukraine appears to have struck back hard, with its military claiming to have killed around 400 Russian soldiers and wounded 300 more in a strike on a military dormitory and ammunition store in the city of Makivka in Russian-occupied East Ukraine. Russian officials said U.S.-made rockets hit the site, which used to be a vocational school, and said Ukraine was greatly exaggerating the death toll. A massive blow was dealt to the vocational school from American MLRS HIMARS. They were dead and wounded. The exact number is still unknown. Ukraine has also been carrying out its own drone strikes. The latest hit an energy facility in the Bryansk region near the Ukrainian border. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Begin with chaotic weather in California and a rush to clean up from record rainfall. A New Year's storm brought deadly flooding, high winds and landslides to the northern part of the state, along with many feet of snow, shutting down roads and stranding drivers. It's been a race to higher ground in Northern California after a massive storm brought severe downpours this holiday weekend. Many residents in Sacramento County have been ordered to evacuate after the historic rains breached at least two levees. Authorities calling the situation incredibly dangerous. And I told my husband, no, I'm not safe. I don't feel safe. There are growing concerns that swollen rivers could continue to rise this morning after they overflowed onto nearby roadways. First responders rescued at least a dozen stranded drivers from the air and through the floodwaters that turned deadly for at least one person near the town of Wilton. A 
person was found deceased who had been trying to drive through the water. Across Northern California, neighborhoods have been submerged while landslides blocked roadways. Powerful wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour downed trees, causing power outages for tens of thousands. In the Bay Area, San Francisco's iconic Fisherman's Wharf experienced its wettest day in nearly 30 years, and the Oakland Zoo will remain closed for at least the next two weeks after a huge sinkhole there collapsed at its entrance. This is crazy. I've never seen it so deep here. The atmospheric river brought more than eight feet of snow to the Sierra Nevadas, which shut down roads and even closed many ski resorts. As the system heads east through the Rockies, avalanche warnings are in effect after a skier was killed near Breckenridge, Colorado. And another avalanche was caught on camera from downtown Telluride this weekend. And back here in California, the rain that has landed here in the valley impacting areas previously destroyed and damaged by wildfires, what are known as burn scars. This soil, terrible at absorbing water. Pamela Joseph returns to salvage what she can after floodwaters wrecked her home. A single room is all that's left of her six-bedroom bungalow, and it's close to a precipice. When night, when night comes, I have to go somewhere else to sleep. My house is finished. The government has promised help, but so far it hasn't reached tens of thousands of people across Nigeria. Some flood victims say nothing is being done. The floods between June and November were among the worst to hit Nigeria in half a century. Infrastructure like roads and bridges have been damaged or swept away. Two months after the disaster, officials are still taking stock of the damage. But the government says it needs $2 billion now to fix damaged infrastructure. Analysts say it's clear authorities at all levels were ill-prepared for the disaster. Months after unprecedented floods in Pakistan, much of the farming land in Kherpur district in the southern Sindh province is still underwater. People are rebuilding as best as they can, but many are angry with the government's response. Aid was slow to reach remote regions. Our houses have fallen down. We don't have tents. We can't shade our children from the sun. Our houses have been submerged. I swear to God, there is nothing left. All our belongings have been washed away. We're poor, our children are sick. They are just sitting there. At the height of the flooding, a third of Pakistan was underwater. 33 million people were affected. Estimated 16 million children lost their homes and schools and were vulnerable to waterborne disease and malnutrition. In the months since the disaster, outbreaks of cholera, malaria and dengue fever have been reported. Disasters or states of emergencies were declared in 19 of the country's 25 poorest districts, pushing about 9 million people into poverty. With an economy already in crisis before the monsoon season, the government has appealed for more help from the global community. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, things will be going on as normal as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. Sri Lanka may have been relatively stable in the past three months, but the food insecurity in the economic hit crisis hit country is far from stable. According to a report released by the World Food Program, 36% of households in Sri Lanka are food insecure. Over 5 in 10 households are either pawning items or formally borrowing money to be able to afford food. Food prices also remain a primary concern for 9 out of 10 households. The report suggests that the economic crisis has deepened the food insecurity to a concerning high level.
with nearly 8 in 10 households now resorting to food coping mechanisms. Consumers at this market who spoke to us said that they do feel that food prices and especially inflation coming this new year of 2023 are only expected to worsen, adding added pressure on the salaries and wages of the middle and lower class communities here in the island nation who said that more than 50 to even 70 percent of their salaries are now being sacrificed to just buying the basic commodities and groceries needed to feed their families. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. So remember food prices, showed a 10.6% increase over last year. And because of things like drought, supply chain shortages, and overall inflation next year, you can see these prices pop even more. It's getting expensive to go grocery shopping. Our next guest, a fourth generation farmer, warns that 2023 could be even worse with the food security threat. Tennessee farmer and Turning Point USA ambassador Stephanie Nash joins us now. A food security threat, that sounds pretty scary. Uh, why, why do you think 2023 is going to be worse than 2022? Well, you have to look at the overall decrease in family farmers and ranchers around our country. You have to look at the Russia-Ukraine war, how that's going to affect resources here in America. And you also have to look at the Netherlands. I think that's a big deal that people are not talking about enough. You know, they're, they're fighting back against their government because they know the unconstitutional regulations will kill off 3,000 farms in the Netherlands. And then you have to look at, to come in 2023, we face drought in Texas, we face increased feed prices, we face more regulations and more housing developments against our agriculture communities. So that's a big food security threat to our future here in America. How is the federal government capable of making this work through, as you mentioned, uh, making it more difficult for America's farmers to produce food that goes into the grocery stores uh, for people to be able to eat? Our world is changing. The way we farm is changing. And the USDA needs to know that there is a lot of weather threats to our family farmers and ranchers. You know, I have friends in Texas that were burning hay to try to keep their crops more. Mm -hmm. And where is PETA, where is politicians, and where is the USDA when we are trying to save our crops and our animals from weather devastation? Um, and they want to tell us how to do our job on the side with regulation. California, you know, they have tons of regulations with air quality, with water coalitions, just being able to get resources they need. It's like they're pushing us into a corner to go out of business. And that is really a food supply threat to keeping American grown. Foreign countries are coming in and buying up land. Right. So the American people really do need to ask themselves, do we want our food grown here in America or do we want it from other countries? The other thing Americans need to realize is, you know, in the beef market, there are four main packers and they made marginal profits last year off beef farmers and they're still selling off their cattle because of drought and situations and not being able to get feed in certain parts of our country. So if you look at big corp, big government, they are the ones killing off family farmers and ranchers and reaping the benefit of Americans at the grocery store. So that's the truth of what is happening in America. And that's the truth of what will happen if we don't start to wake up and support local. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for your expertise and for coming on this morning to warn everybody about the potential that 2023 has on farmers and the agricultural industry. You talk about shortages, a uh, real possibility next year. How bad could it be?
You look at Ukraine, you look at Russia, you look at what's going on in the Netherlands. I think there's going to be a lot of food shortages next year. Amos 8, 11. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that it will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Even worse than a famine of physical food is a famine of spiritual food. Because Israel rejected the prophets, God promised a severe judgment. Just as Israel rejected the prophets, the church today is rejecting God's word. How tragic to turn a deaf ear to God and be given a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Another large earthquake rattles Humboldt County. There you see the video showing the shaking the moment it hit. 5.4 magnitude quake hit near the community of Rio Dell this morning. New video of a strong earthquake hitting Northern California yesterday morning, a magnitude 5.4, that's a preliminary magnitude quake, struck an area known as Rio Dell in Humboldt County. Now, no reports of any major damage or injuries right now, but there were some power outages. The, the same area was hit with a strong quake last month. A 6.4 magnitude quake struck Rio Dell, killing two people and causing widespread damage. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Mobile's midnight fireworks weren't set to go off for another 45 minutes when an explosion of gunfire rocked Mobile's entertainment district. Everybody started running. I instantly ran. And I had to jump into the car and things got really crazy. Nicholas Pritchett was among the many desperately seeking a safe space as someone opened fire on the busy street, even as thousands of people were enjoying a concert just a few blocks away. TK Bailey was with him. I did hear the shots right here. Uh, it was two AKs go off, two bodies drop. So yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's one hell of a way to spend our New Year. But that count? would be much higher. MPD later confirmed nine people ages 17 to 57 were wounded by the shooter and one of those people the shots proved fatal. Sadness and frustration over the shooting death of a Riverside County Sheriff's deputy. Critics say his murder could have been prevented if his killer were kept in jail. Very, very sad. Um, my thoughts and prayers go out to his family, obviously. Heartbreak and outrage are growing in Riverside County over the shooting death of 32-year-old deputy Isaiah Cordero. Oh, he's got a firearm. That's crazy, you know. Corrections officials just released this mugshot to us of 44-year-old William Shea McKay. Sheriff investigators say the three-strike felon shot and killed Deputy Cordero Thursday during a traffic stop. He then led law enforcement on a lengthy chase across freeways that ended with a shootout and McKay's death. The sheriff says McKay's criminal convictions included kidnapping, assault, and armed robbery. Instead of sentencing him to 25 years to life, which should have happened, the judge lowered his bail allowing him to be released. He was again arrested for failing to appear at his sentencing and additional criminal charges. That same judge released him again. We would not be here today if the judge had done her job. So what happens when it's Avenue of us to uh, officers stand at the location? Just two hours before the New Year's Eve countdown, chaos near Times Square. After police see a man attack three officers with a machete, revelers capturing the panic as it unfolded. Right in front of us, yeah, it was crazy, it was madness. And Law enforcement sources telling NBC News the suspect is 19-year-old Trevor Bickford of Maine. 
Officials say he struck two officers in the head with this large knife before he was shot in the shoulder by one of them and taken into custody. All three officers have been released from the hospital. Law enforcement officials tell NBC News Bickford arrived in New York City by Amtrak on Thursday adding he had a backpack that included personal writings, terrorist propaganda, a pocket knife, and $200 in cash. From his hospital bed this weekend, authorities say he made a pro-jihadi statement. Just weeks ago, law enforcement officials say federal agents in Maine interviewed Bickford after a relative warned he had been expressing revolutionary support for Islam. On Sunday, the FBI tells NBC News agents went to Bickford's family home in Maine. And officials say they also got a hold of the suspect's diary. And in that diary, he talks about being prepared to die in the attack, even talking about where he wanted to be buried. Police believe he acted alone, so there's no longer a threat. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves, illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. As Christ followers, what are we to do as we see the world growing darker. We are to walk in love, light, and wisdom, as we read in Ephesians 5, 1 through 21. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an adulterer, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth 
the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.